Hi everybody, it's Franny and we're back with the 3-2 Carrera project. What did you think of that last episode? We finally got the engine running. Yay! It was a little crazy, a little weird, but it's up and running, so that's a good thing. What I want to do today is actually take the car out for a drive, but we have several things we have to do first. The gear selector won't go into gear well. It just, it feels weird. It kind of goes into first, but then now you can't find three and fourth very well. I think it's just out of adjustment. We had the transmission completely rebuilt, and so that kind of makes me think that well things are a little different in there so we're going to readjust the entire shift linkage. Second thing is we don't have any axles in the car so it's not going to go anywhere without those so we have to install the axles in the car and get that done and then um, oh we don't have a seat in the car either so we'll have to do that. All right well we got several things to do. I want to start with that shift linkage so let's get to that. Adjusting the shift linkage on this car isn't all that difficult. We just need to access the actual shift coupler and it's under this panel here and between the two seats. So go ahead and pull this panel off. It's just four Phillips screws. We have a big rubber boot here. We'll pull back so we can get access to this thing. And here we are. This is our coupler. But before you start, I like to put the thing in some known gear. I can get it into first gear pretty easily. It seems to go in pretty easily. So let's go ahead and put it in first gear and we'll loosen up our coupler here. So we just kind of move this around a little bit, make sure it's happy, kind of where it wants to be. We're gonna clamp this back down again and see where we are. There's second, first and second. Still feels a little tight. Yeah, the third doesn't want to go in at all. I'm gonna push in on the clutch, see if we can get it in third. There's fourth. There's third, I think it's in third. So that's an awful lot of effort to get it into third gear. So I'm going to adjust it so that it loosens up a little bit. It's a lot easier to get into third. Now here's the deal. I have a Sane shift kit installed on my gear shift here, and it has a little spring on it that locates the third, fourth plane, because normally these gear shift mechanisms don't have anything like that on it. And you come out a second and, or come out a fifth, and you're pretty much in Kansas. So I think it really, really helps, but I I think what's happening is that my shift kit is trying to put the third, fourth plane that's out a little bit differently than what's actually in the transmission. That's what I'm guessing. So let's go ahead and loosen this back up again and let it settle in so that it's happy in third gear. Everybody happy? All right, let's go ahead and lock this down again. There we go. There's fourth. Third and fourth. How about first? Yeah, there's first and Second, first, second, back into neutral. There's fourth and third. Those are a little bit easier now, that's for sure. And then there's reverse and fifth. I think our shifter does need to come backwards just a little bit more. This is a bit of an iterative process. Also, not a bad idea to do it kind of, I know this sounds crazy, but while you're out driving around, I mean, not, not while you're actually driving, but adjust it, drive around a little bit, see how you, oh, this shifter's way too far forward, it's not going, whatever. Oh, I can kind of get this gear. So kind of drive around a little bit. That really helps, I think, to just kind of get it locked in. You do have to be very careful, though. When you do get done with it, you want to lock this thing down well because it will sort of move a little bit if it's not locked down well. That's why it was so tight when I had to get it off. And there is a really strange condition you can get this transmission into. I, I read about it. I didn't believe it until I actually had it happen to me. If this shifter does loosen up on you, it is... It is weirdly possible to be in reverse and another gear simultaneously. So if you lit out on the clutch, the internals of the transmission will just stop. It's as though the transmission is just absolutely locked because it's got reverse selected and another gear. And how do I know that? Well, if you put it in neutral and let go of the clutch, it will actually go backwards. So reverse was selected and when you put it in first, it, it will then stop on you because it's trying to go forward and backward simultaneously. It's the weirdest thing. It's the absolutely weirdest thing. It's not the end of the world. Just loosen up your shift linkage here again, reset it again, and you'll be fine. But yeah, it was, that was <laughs> the weirdest thing. All right. I think you need to be back just a bit. 
Yeah, more like that. It does still feel a little bit stiff, but it is getting third and fourth better than it was, certainly. Our first step in reinstalling the axles, believe it or not, is to remove the bottom bolt on the shock absorber here. There's just no way to get the axle in because on these axles, the actual stub axle is bonded to the outboard CV joint, so it's all one piece. We have to loosen this guy up, take it off, and then we'll put our axle in. We can put this guy back on later. We can now move our shock out of the way. Now, I had mentioned I was going to rebuild the CB joints here, but the booties actually look great. They're in great shape on both ends here. So I think they're fine. I'm not gonna worry about them. I did replace the boots and I did rebuild these a few years ago. So it kind of seems like a lot of extra work and it's probably my least favorite thing to do is to rebuild CV joints. Before I insert the spline into the carrier up there, I am gonna put a little bit of grease on it. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just keeps it from corroding is really what we're looking for. All right, just something like that. So then we're just gonna hoist this guy up and put it inside the carrier. There we go. There it goes. Okay, there we go. You just want to make sure it's seated in all the way. You have to kind of bend the CV joint down to get it up over, you know, the suspension arm here. So I've got all my hardware all ready to go here. I did end up getting new bolts. Now the original ones are the ones I took off. They had been sort of rounded off inside. Somebody either used the wrong tool. These are a hex, not a star pattern. I barely got them off. They were just completely destroyed on one side. So I ordered all new bolts. Now these washers here, these guys, they're pretty special as well. They're very specific to these CV joints. They have little kind of round sort of serration marks on them. And then of course we've got our little um, spreader plate here, I guess you'd call it. Now at this point, let's go ahead and just install all of our bolts. Okay, I'm gonna leave those loose. So I'm just going to kind of cinch them down a little bit here. Make sure they're all seated and we'll go back and torque them. And here's where the super long hex extensions come in handy yet again. I bought this set, of course, so that we could get up into here and get these bolts off. But wow, these things have been useful in a bunch of different places. And here's a great example. So this will get you all the way out away from the boot. And that's going to make tightening these guys down a lot easier. See how that gets us out away from the boot there? That's great. Now, as far as the torque value for these guys, I looked in Wayne's book and he said 36 foot pounds and the Bentley says 30 foot pounds. So I don't know, uh, I'm gonna probably go with a higher, I think 36. I just don't want these things coming out. They're very strong bolts and I'm not worried about that, um, about breaking them or anything, but I do wanna get them in. I'd rather they didn't come loose. So I'm gonna set to 36 or so. All right, let's go ahead and torque them in. Put a little splash of color on it so we know which one we've done. The last thing we need to do is to jack up the shock here to get it lined up with the carrier and get our big bolt in. And it's a lot of pressure on this shock. Actually, it's pushing down reasonably hard, so I have to use a jack here to do it. So let me go ahead and jack this up a little bit. We'll get it lined up and get it in there. Now, this guy is kind of a beast. It takes 92 foot-pounds to tighten this thing on. And it's a big 22-millimeter bolt, too. There we go. Holy cow. Woo! 
that was quite a bit. All right, the other side is pretty much the same thing. So we'll come back together when we have to actually torque down the big nuts that go on the outside of those axles. That's gonna be a thing. So, all right, let me get the other side done and we'll get to those axles. While we're under the car, I kind of forgot something. What do you think? What do you think looks like it might be missing under here that I haven't quite installed yet? I don't know. Oh, what do you think that's for? And maybe this guy here? Hmm, maybe it's this, the anti-sway bar. Yeah, so <laughs> kind of forgot about that. I also have new bushings for it. I didn't completely forget I actually ordered new bushings. So let me go ahead and install this guy in while we're at it under the car and then we'll get to those axle nuts that are on the on the end of these axles here. And like I like to use this stuff on pretty much everything, I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone paste on these guys as I install them. That'll keep them from squeaking and squawking and should make them a little bit happier. This has been powder coated. I sent it off to the powder coater because it just looked terrible. Being back here, it just got pelted by rocks. And I wonder if the rubber against the powder coating would actually start to squeak over time. I'll bet it would. If you've watched all the episodes in the series, you'll remember that we had this replaced. Um, I think it was actually on the other side, but both of these have had to be replaced. And it's a problem with 3-2 Carreras. They put in a bigger anti-sway bar, a little bit thicker than they did on the SCs that came before it, but they didn't operate the mounts and they have a tendency to just sort of fatigue out, snap and break off. So there's aftermarket ones that are quite a bit stronger and that's what's on this car right now. So they've had both of them replaced because it, it, sure enough, it broke both of them. And our bolts get torqued to 61 foot-pounds. And our torsion bar carrier bolts here get torqued to 18 foot-pounds. So I'm using my littler torque wrench and get those guys torqued down. Okay, well that's our torsion bar in. Woohoo! We also have something to do up front. Let me show you that. We left this whole area open so we could check our fuel lines, but there's actually a stone guard, a big metal plate that goes here. So let's go ahead and reinstall that at this point. So there's just a couple of nuts up here we need to remove. These guys here, one on each side and a washer. And then there's also these cap bolts here that we have to remove as well. And this is the actual plate that goes up there. And this poor thing takes a beating. Take a look at this thing. Wow, it's, it's just, it's been beat up. It was rusted. It's got some pretty, pretty good dents in it. See, I see those. <laughs> so this poor thing has led a pretty rough life. I went ahead and had it powder coated. So I had the mindset to do that. So that's great. And it just pretty much goes up here. It's no, no big deal, but maybe the powder coating will help it last a little bit longer. Who knows? There. Now, weirdly, these have different torque values, which is kind of interesting. Our cap bolts up here have a 35 foot pound rating on them and these guys 21. So let's go ahead and set our torque wrench to put these guys in, 35. Okay, 35. Okay. And that's our stone guard in. Okay, I think we're actually finally done under here. Let's get to those axle nuts and get them torqued. Our axle nuts, these guys are 32 millimeter. Look at that big honking washer, now that. 
is a honking washer. We just need to torque these guys down. Now the torque spec on this is 339 foot pounds or 340 foot pounds, something like that. That's quite a bit. So let me go ahead and throw this on, roll this in. And I've got my breaker bar on my big, huge impact socket here. You know, there's no way I'm gonna get enough torque with this thing. It's just way too short. Let me just roll this guy in. So in order to get the torque we need, I stole the arm off of my other jack and I put a mark here at two and a half feet. With my weight at two and a half feet, that should equal that 340-ish foot-pounds. So you can um, comment in the, the uh, comment section down there if you think you know what I weigh. Well, it looks like my uh, cheater pole won't go all the way down to the end. So let's go ahead and remark this. All right, two and a half feet is right here. All right, you ready for this? <laughs> all my weight at two and a half feet. So let's, let's, let's get this thing torqued. Here we go. That's it, my feet are off the ground. That's nutty, but that, in theory, my weight at two and a half feet should be 340 foot pounds. All right, let's go ahead and torque the other one on the other side. And one final touch, I almost forgot to put the hub covers on. So of course, because we're snooty Porsche people, we want to make sure that the emblem is pointed towards the valve stem. I know, it's so silly, huh? Boom, there we go. And the last thing we need to do before we can take the car out for a little tootle is to put this guy in. We need a seat. It's not particularly light. Now here's kind of a neat bit of trivia. This is a Recaro seat. If you look under the bottom of it, it has a Recaro sticker on it. So you're like, yeah, I know, I've heard of Recaro seats, they're everywhere. Did you know though that the little 356 was built by a company called Reuter, and Reuter was across the street from Porsche back when they were building the 356s. But later in the, sometime in the 60s, like 61 or so, they folded Reuter into Porsche, but they left one small bit all by itself, and then they renamed it to Recaro, and they made seats. Isn't that cool? So these seats and these Recaro seats that you see everywhere is just the last little bit of what's left over from the Reuter body company for the 356s. I always thought that's pretty cool. All right, let's get this guy in. Now this seat that I'm putting in here is not the ones we got redone. These are seats that we got from Chad actually. So you remember Chad, he's the one who drove the car when we started this whole project. Let me know what he thought of the transmission and the car in general. At any rate, he has a car just like this, but a coupe in this same color scheme, this same maroon color scheme. And he turned his car into a race car. So he pulled these big heavy seats out and they were just sitting in his garage. And, and we were over there one day and he's like, you know, I've got another set of wheels. I've got some winter tires. I've got a set of seats and <laughs> all sorts of stuff. So we kind of went shopping and we ended up with his seats as well. Now we have our new seats, which have been completely redone and those are gonna be awesome but I'm not gonna bother putting those in until we get the carpet done so you may notice that the interior of the car is kind of a disaster and that's because I've got like the center console out and a couple of other things I'm not gonna put it all back together because we just have to tear it right back apart when the carpet actually bothers to show up that maybe is going to be the end earliest the end of January 2021 um, probably more like sometime in February they're just way behind because of COVID and such so, oh my gosh, so that, yeah, all of this is, is being made in Germany, so we just have to wait for it to get here. It's gonna be a little bit, but we can still drive the car. I'll put a seat in here and we'll drive it around and be just fine. Well, all right, we got a chair in the car. Do we got torsion bars put in. Let's see what else we do. We put axles in. You know what? I'm thinking, let's go for a drive. All right, here we go. Hopefully start right up and everything will be great. It's a little rough, but not the end of the world. We'll work on that later.
There's reverse. That's a plus. Oh, look at the cars moving. Look at that. Yay. Okay. Kind of forgot the fire extinguishers. <laughs> Could be a thing, so I brought them. I got them. Look at this, we're rolling. Went into second pretty easily. I'm looking behind to see if there's anything back there. We're gonna pull over in a minute just to double check that everything's dry. I don't hear anything weird. That's good. It's a little different sounding, but you know, we have a new muffler. So that's very different. It's a bigger pipe on it and it sounds a little throatier. I think it's, I think that's okay. Hear that? Ba -da 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 -da. That. Not sure if that's completely normal or not. I almost feels like we're missing a cylinder, but I don't know. I did check all six of the spark plugs and make sure they were all firmly seated. So they're all in. It's possible it could have gotten um, fouled, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and check underneath there and see what we see. All right, let's see what we see under here. I'm not seeing any drips under there at all. No gas, no oil either like we had before. Now look at that, looks pretty good. It smells funny, but we sort of expect that. You can kind of see the heat coming off of it. All right. The idle's a little high. It's like at a thousand. That's a little high. It should be around like 900. It's a little weird. Gotta figure that out. I really am wondering if we have a cylinder out or not. I'm gonna have to test that. We'll figure that out though. But that'll probably be in the next video because it's getting kind of late in the day and it's kind of cold. But I think this is a pretty good success. Car's moving and under its own power, doing pretty well. I haven't been able to get into third. There's third and there's fourth and there's fifth. Okay, so that was our big question as well, right? Could we get into all the gears? It feels like it's going into gear just fine now. I figured it probably just needed to kind of move around a little bit. Car back on the lift here. Well, holy cow, that was quite a day, huh? We've got the axles in, we've got our sway bar in, we got a lot of work done on the car, and we were able to actually take it out for a drive. So my question about the transmission, it seems to be going into all five gears in reverse just fine. So I think that's okay. I think it just needed to kind of get turning and get moving a little bit. Now, there was the question of a little bit of an oil leak from the last episode. And the two connectors, the two big banjo bolts on each side of the heads here, I think that's where it was coming from. The leak was really far out on the sides of the engine. And I thought, mm, you know, I wonder if that's it. So I put a 17 millimeter on it, just a little bit, you know, like 16th of a turn on both of them. And it looks like we're good. No oil down there at all. I don't see any oil leaks of any kind. Our fuel leaks that we had before are gone as well. So that just kind of leaves how is the engine actually running. And in my opinion, it's a little bit rough. It doesn't seem to be running as smoothly as it could be. And maybe that's, I don't know what, I'm a little, I don't know, I'm still kind of thinking about it. I did swap out this bypass valve with the old bypass valve because I bought a new one just because it really pretty much because it looked pretty. This one is a known good part. I put it in and remember that surging, that rawr, rawr, that was a bummer. Well, it's not surging anymore. You didn't hear it surge at all. It seems to be running just fine. So I would venture to say that that new part is just no good. Weird. My only other thought is that maybe we have a cylinder that's not quite firing and that's gonna be a little weird to try and figure out. I'll pull one spark plug at a time and see if I can figure out which cylinder it is. Should make a big difference if you pull one of the spark plugs. I guess it's possible that one of the injectors could be clogged, but you know, we sent them all off and got them cleaned. All the fuel lines are cleaned. Um, 
I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. But at any rate, we got the car on the road and driving. That was a, that's just, that's ginormous. So from here, we'll do a little more diagnostic work on the engine, just make sure everything's happy there. And then next big project on the car is going to be the interior. And I think I mentioned before that it's kind of on hold until we get the actual carpets from Germany. And that's going to be sometime in January, maybe late January, probably more like February, something like that. It keeps getting pushed out anyways. So it's going to be a little while before we can get the interior sorted on the car, but we'll get there. All right. Well, you know what? Check this out. I think we can do this. Look at this. I think we can do this. That's pretty satisfying. Woohoo! Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It was really fun for me. If you did, please give the episode a thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and you know I'll get to them. So thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a super special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay, until next time, safe travels. Bye.